Hey guys, Jen, welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you're here today. It is time for another Run Day Monday and you're not gonna wanna miss it. So today we're gonna be talking about something a little bit different. We talk a lot about training. Um, I always like to give a caveat. I am not a running coach. I am not a running professional in any way, shape, or form. I am just a girl who runs. I have run dozens and dozens of races at this point. I think I just ran my 28th half marathon. I've run four full marathons, tons of 10Ks, been running for over a decade, and I've learned a few things along the way. A lot of what I've learned, I have picked up from great books and other great friends of mine, running coaches, and an awful lot of trial and error. So always consult your doctor before starting a running program. You can check out my entire running playlist by going up here somewhere and clicking on that and getting all kinds of fun running information, how to get started running, and also trip reports from my awesome Run Disney trips that have literally been all over the world. I am wearing my Paris half marathon, my Run Disneyland, what was it called? It was called the something magic something. I don't know. I should really know that. It was the Disneyland Paris half marathon, but it had a name. So I'll have to look that up. I'm wearing it today because I just committed to run this race, not this year, but next year. So I have a long time, like a year and a half. Uh, but D September 2020 is my next Disneyland Paris half marathon. So I would love to see some of you guys there. Uh, before I get into the topic for today, uh, a few of you have asked to see my medals. And so what I decided might be kind of fun is to, every time I do a Run Day Monday, I'll show you guys one of my favorite medals. Um, there's just, everybody wants me to do a video and show all of them. I'm going to be perfectly honest. There are just too many, and I think it would be too long, and I think it would be boring. So what I'm gonna do uh, is just show you one medal. Um, every week we do Run Day Monday, and we'll see if we can get through them all. So this one I'm showing you today was from the inaugural uh, Disneyland 10K. This is when they used to do races in California. I'll insert a picture of it too, because I'm not sure how well that detail is going to show up. But as you can see, it has got the Mad Hatter uh, and Alice, and they are in a teacup, and they are supposedly, you know, you assume that they are spinning around, and it says inaugural on it, and I just love this medal. It is by far one of my favorites. It's the only medal I believe that I have, and maybe the only one they've ever done, that features Alice in Wonderland, and I am a huge Alice in Wonderland fan. So anyway, that's going to be our kind of medal of the week. So a lot of you either just finished up a big race or you're getting ready to run a big race. I actually have a few friends that are running the London Marathon as I'm filming this. So Chrissy, I am all for you. I am rooting for you. I hope you're having a great day. Um, a lot of you ran Boston. Congratulations to all the Boston runners, including my friend Kirsten. I just got done with two really big back-to-back -back race weekends where I ran the Star Wars Half Marathon and then the Ville to Ville Relay. And we talk a lot about the training leading up to the big race. And most training plans that weekend of the big race you know, that, that's the end of it. That's the end of your training plan. By the way, if you are looking for a running coach, I am not one, but I'm going to put two names below of friends of mine that are and that will work with you online, uh, Denny and Stephanie. They are both great. All their contact information is below. What a really good coach will tell you, though, is your training plan actually extends beyond race day. And this is especially important for those of us that are over 40 runners. And I really think it's important for everybody if they wanna run for the long term. What a lot of us do is we go out there, we run our best race, we give it all that we have. We maybe get a little bit broken, as I did when I ran two races back to back, which is not my smartest idea. And then we don't really give much thought to what we're gonna do after the race. And I think sometimes we have nagging injuries, our body doesn't really get a chance to heal properly, and we just jump back into our daily lives, maybe our regular training schedule, or kind of worse, we are burnt out on running and so we don't run at all because we don't really have to because we don't have it on a training plan. So over the years, I've kind of developed my own uh, gen recovery plan that covers the two weeks after I've run a major race. And it's, it's pretty specific and I wanted to share it with you guys today. 
So the first part of this plan is that I don't really run. Um, I may go out for runs if I need to kind of psychologically, but I don't go out for any training runs that I'm serious about in any way, shape or form for at least two weeks. Now this race, I really did feel a little broken. So I decided not to run at all. I just went for my first run yesterday after taking two weeks off and my body was so happy. You really need to have time. At least I do, again, because I'm not an expert. I'm just telling you from trial and error what has worked for me. I really need time to recover. My body needs to not run for a while in order for everything to kind of heal up. Now, I have had plenty of friends that have worked with physical therapists and so forth that have said this is actually a great idea. And I first started doing it because this is what Ryan Hall does. And I was like, you know what? If it is good enough for Ryan Hall, it is good enough for Jim LaForge. So two weeks of minimal running or preferably no running at all. So that's the first part of the two week plan. But not running is only a small piece of the plan. Uh, my recovery, as I have gotten over 40, and even now as I have gotten over 45, and as I am inching my way towards 50, is just taking longer. So what I do is enter into sort of an overall wellness plan. I make sure I'm getting plenty of sleep. I make sure that my nutritional needs are being met. I make sure uh, that, you know, if I need to, I go to my massage therapist. I'm doing a lot of yoga right now. I'm kind of re-stretching my body and getting everything worked through all the damage that I may have done in training. Now, I'm the first to admit that part of this could very well be motivated by the fact that years ago I found that after a major event, I would get a little depressed, right? Because you've put all of your energy into getting ready for this race. You had a great training plan, or at least I hope you've had a great training plan, and you've checked off those training runs, and you've, you've gotten up every day, and you've had a focus. You know, today's a cross training day, or, or today's a rest day, or today is a tempo run, or today is my long run. I mean, <laughs> you stalk the weather, or at least I do for every weekend that's coming up. Well, am I going to do my long run on Saturday? I'm going to do it on Sunday. Is it going to be raining? What's going to be going on? And it, it becomes this little bit of a part-time job, right? As you're focusing on your training. And then after the race, not only can you have like post vacation depression, especially if you're like me and you do a lot of your races at Disney or, you know, in Paris, this thing you've been looking so much forward to and now it's over, there can be that little bit of a letdown. Um, but also your body just is, is used to always having something to do and then all of a sudden you wake up in the morning and you're like, okay, I'm gonna go to work and I'm gonna have dinner and I don't really have to go for a run. I don't have to think about that. So for me, having things on the schedule that are intentional healing things really keeps that at bay and keeps me from getting kind of down in the dumps because I do have a plan and I just function better <laughs> as a human being when I have a plan. So um, I'll actually write it in my calendar. I do a lot of walking. Uh, walking is actually one of my favorite activities and I've always felt like Queen Elizabeth is still in such great shape because she walks every single day. She also drinks every single day, but that's for another day. <laughs> But I really do think that walking is such a restorative thing and you can do kind of that active recovery. So I'm not suggesting that you're a couch potato for two weeks. As I say, I do yoga. I do a lot of walking. If um, I can get to the pool, I like to do swimming. Uh, anything to just kind of restore. Because if I, if I look at training, which I do, as kind of depleting my resources, putting it all out there, I'm constantly breaking down and building up my muscles and all of that, then that recovery time, I'm going to put everything back into the storehouse so that I'm ready for whatever the next phase is. Now, really this past year, I have not had more than like a month before I was in another training plan. That is not really healthy. So for the first time in a while, I'm going to be on a maintenance schedule and I'm not scheduled to run another race right now until January. So I may pick up a couple of local 10Ks because I really do want to work on my speed a little bit but I really do plan on doing a maintenance program. Now, a maintenance program is where you are just maintaining your base. So when I say base, that's kind of how many miles you run on a weekly basis. And this is something you wanna maintain all the time. Um, I don't know of any long-term healthy runners that just train and then don't run at all, and train and then don't run at all, and train and then don't run at all. Um, let's do that one more time, and train and then don't run at all. <laughs> it's not good for you. Um, I look at running, as I think you know, as 
very holistic and very much part of my overall well-being. The races are really just to motivate me and for fun. It's the running that is so important to me. It keeps me healthy, it keeps me young, it keeps me you know, it keeps my autoimmune disease at bay. Um, so the running is very important. Speaking of my autoimmune disease, I'm thinking of doing a whole video. I do have Hashimoto's um, hypothyroidism. Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, say that five times fast. If you are interested in a video just about that, will you put that in the comments below because I haven't decided yet if I wanna do it, but I think enough people might be interested in it. So I'm thinking about doing that. So. My maintenance plan looks like this. Are you ready? Yours could be very different. Again, reach out to the running coaches in the comments below or find a good maintenance plan online. For me, for my mental, physical, spiritual health, I need to be running two to three times a week for about 30 minutes. And then guess what? I'm still gonna do a long run on the weekends. And you're thinking, gee, Jen, that sounds an awful lot like your regular training plan. I know, cause it kinda is. The difference is those long runs on the weekends, um, number one, I don't have to be super um, disciplined about them. I mean, if I'm busy, if I'm out of town, I just don't worry about it. Number two, those are gonna cap out at between five and six miles. I always like to maintain being able to run a 10K pretty easily. Uh, that's just for me, my base fitness. It's where I feel comfortable. And it's also where I feel really strong for when that next cycle comes around for a half marathon training plan. Um, I'm really just ready to jump right in. And I only need about six weeks to go from my base to being ready for a half marathon. And that's really comfortable for me. That's how I feel like I'm in shape. I'm fit. It allows room for cross training. And as I told you guys, I started doing yoga and all of those other things. So after your race, yeah, you could be a little down in the dumps, but when you plan out your training, look at those two weeks after as your wellness plan. You're gonna kind of get everything healed up and you're gonna be really ready to jump back into your maintenance plan and then eventually to jump back into training for your next race, because that's what this is all about, keeping you guys ready, happy and healthy for the long haul. I'm so glad that you were here today. Please comment, like, and golly, subscribe. I love to hear from you guys. Let me know how your running journey is going. I hope you're having a great day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.